Welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. I'm your host, Nate Palmer, and this is the intersection of physical and financial success. So in the Million Dollar Body Podcast, this is a, a podcast that's built for high performers, entrepreneurs, business owners, busy professionals that are interested in gaining an unfair advantage in their life using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. So if you're not a part of the Facebook group, definitely jump in because all the podcasts, aside from this one, go out live there, nate.trainingsystems.com slash group will get you there. So if you're already if you're already watching this, you're watching this live on Facebook, I'm super excited to have you because we're talking today about cycles and rhythms of your body, your natural, your body's natural energy systems, okay? So we're, there's a lot of cycles of your body, your circadian rhythm, kind of the, the rhythms that come with like between summer and winter, um, like hormonal cycles, a lot of cycle, when, when I say cycles, a lot of females are like, I know what you're talking about there. We're not going to get into those so much as the normal day-to-day -day cycles and how you can use those to your advantage and create a rapid fat loss transformation using what you're already doing on a daily basis rather than trying to fight yourself, okay? This is a super important topic, so that's why I want to make sure we're addressing it. Before we do that, though, one of the things that I like to do as a part of the, as a part of the group is get a shout out to the people who are accomplishing big things in the Million Dollar Body community. So I know we're not on there, but check but check it out because i just want to say congratulations to maria feltz she lost 14.6 percent of her body weight and was able to use that to win the biggest loser competition that she was currently engaged in so lost a ton of inches lost a bunch of body weight absolutely killing it and maria i just want to say awesome job keep it up just keep working that that process you are doing amazing okay so to sum that, I just, I love the Million Dollar Body community because it's a, it's a community of people. It's really positive too, which is you know, unique to, unique for the internet, but people are accomplishing big things. The goal of the community has always been, it's very simple. It's that people in that community get healthier and make more money. That's always been the goal. Okay. So if you want to be a part of a, uh, a group of people that believes that, thinks that, and is, is dedicated to lifting each other up along the way, jump in n8trainingsystems.com slash group. So how do we work with our body's natural rhythms to lose fat fast, to, to recomposition our body, to, to actually look awesome, look like we lift, have a ton of energy all the time? Um, we're going to talk about that today. So there's a few rhythms that our bodies go through that we're not speaking about in this call. It's like seasonal. In the like extreme northern or southern hemispheres, you, know, you might even experience this yourself. Um, calcium absorption, bone remodeling decline during the winter when vitamin D production's decreased, okay? I lived in Seattle for about four years. I can attest that this is true. When you're not getting, you're not seeing the sun for months on end, um, those things will kind of take a back seat. That's why they don't even test people in Seattle or in the Pacific Northwest for vitamin D deficiency anymore because they're just like, yeah, you have it, you live out here. So check it out. So, and we're not talking about that today. It's kind of beyond the scope of what we, what we even need. You know, my lens is not necessarily just like, how do you make your bones stronger? It's how do you lose fat fast? How do you feel amazing? How do you take yourself to the next level? We're not talking about the menstrual cycle today. We repeat, that's repeated on average every 28 days. Ladies, y'all you, know already. Um, I don't know, so I'm not an expert. Not going to talk about that. Um, and then we're also not going to be talking about the um, the difference between like the cycles of like age. So we're not going to talk about how uh, babies change into teenagers. Which, well, my baby turned into a teenager at age three. So like, if you guys have any help for me there, please let me know because. Um, I swear to God, she's she's 14. She told me this morning, I was like, hey, how's it going, baby? How are you doing? She goes, dad, don't look at me. I was like, ooh, a little too young for this. Okay, whatever, moving on. So I want to be talking about that today because again, outside of the scope of, the, of this conversation, and also I got no freaking idea about any about how to deal with babies. I thought I was gonna, I was gonna be good at it. I am not, need some help, SOS, please, please send help or just send me your favorite talking to toddlers books. So um, I kind of want to give you just like a, a brief background before we, we're not, this is not gonna be like a super sciencey <clears throat> uh, podcast. So don't stress about that. But hormones like melatonin, like cortisol, uh, they do play a role and they do increase and decrease as part of the circadian rhythm, okay? Melatonin is a hormone that makes you sleepy. Your body releases more of it at night and suppresses it during the day. Vitamin D is also a melatonin suppressor. So we don't want to take it at night, take it in the morning. Cortisol is a, people want to know it as the belly fat or the stress hormone, but it can actually make you more alert. Your body releases it as soon as you wake up to help you get out of bed, rock and roll, which is why we always advise drinking coffee an hour after you wake up and not right away. We want to piggyback off that cortisol spike, get the most out of our caffeine. <clears throat> body temperature and metabolism are also part of the circadian rhythm. Your temperature drops when you sleep, rises during waking hours. 
Additionally, your metabolism also will work at different rates throughout the day, kind of depending on what you like, depending on your exercise, depending on your nutrition, training, that sort of thing. Other factors also influence your circadian rhythm, um, and it's going to adjust based on your work hours, what you're doing, uh, your physical activity, other habits, how much you're drinking, what kind of uh, what kind of nutrition you have. These can all affect your circadian rhythm. So I want to talk into that. So first of all, here's how to get out of sync with those rhythms and put yourself in a bad situation where you are now trying to uh, lose fat, drop weight, get in really good shape, but you're just having a hell of a time. And you, you may have done this, you may have experienced in the past, you may be experiencing this right now, but here's how it looks, is when you go to do an activity, you go to start training and you just have no motivation to do so, you're just tired all the time. And then you also are experiencing like the fact that like you are, like you're trying to cut, cut down on calories and eat, nutritious, healthy foods or clean foods or whatever. And you start being like, man, I'm just craving a donut. I'm craving some cake. I want some ice cream. And you have these like these bingy, cravey tendencies. You're out of whack. Something's going on there. Um, and then if uh, the other thing is that if like, if everything you're doing for your, like for your nutrition, for your training to get that, that fat loss, like maybe you're even seeing successful, you're seeing kind of that slow decline over time, but it is costing you a lot. If it's very expensive, mentally, physically, emotionally, just taking a toll on yourself, like your significant others, like, yo, you're grouchy right now. Like these are all signs that you're going at it the wrong way. You're not using your body's natural rhythms. You are instead fighting your body's natural rhythms and trying to just grit through it and get into it and make sure it happens. Okay. So like, that's not sustainable long-term. Anyone can lose weight. It's so easy. If you ate tofu and broccoli all day and ran five miles every morning, you drop weight. I don't care who you are. That's, that's what like you would do it. If you look at the biggest loser contestants, these guys are coming in and they're working out four, five, six hours a day. They're getting their portions controlled down to like 1200 calories. So low. They just drop weight. They shed it. But when they do something like that, so extreme, biggest loser contestants always getting their weight back. And here's why is because if you lose weight in such an extreme way and just really just get after it and you've got Jillian Michaels being like, what are you a little bitch or something? And then, you know, you're like, I'm not. you're crying and throwing up on the treadmill. So what that means for you is that you have to be doing that sort of activity long-term to maintain your gains, maintain your losses. So, so if you're doing something unsustainable, don't expect to be able to maintain it without, without having to incorporate those same uh, difficult, challenging pieces. Okay. So if you're running five miles and eating only tilapia and broccoli, that's what you're going to do to maintain. You're not going to be able to like shift back into a normal maintenance mode where you bring in all carbs all of a sudden, you know, you lose a ton of weight with keto. You don't get to go back to eating bagels. Okay. You have to stay doing keto. That's why I don't recommend things that eliminate entire macronutrient groups, keto, entire food groups, veganism, things like that. Because they're, when you try to shift back to regular life when you go out to eat with your friends go to a bar or something like that it's very difficult to maintain and that weight will spike right back up so here's how to get out of sync a couple of things is sleep less so um like night shift workers third shift workers have a tough time with this because they go against the natural light and dark times of the day um travel that goes across different time zones so jet lag that's a bit that's, that can be a big thing um there's a couple of ways to counteract that we'll, we can talk about that in other episodes or you can check out passport fitness where i go really into depth on on traveling fitness and um, how to avoid jet lag, things like that, that, that come up if you're traveling a lot. Not my number one bestseller in 2020, for some reason, like it didn't, that book didn't sell a lot. So I don't, I don't have any idea why not though. Just it's kind of weird to me. Um, any sort of lifestyle that's encouraging these really late nights or early, early wake times, uh, medications can kind of get you out of whack. High stress. Uh, having a waist to height ratio of 0.5 or higher. I generally recommend getting that under 0.46, but having 0.5 or higher for sure is going to put you out of whack with your rhythms. High sugar, high carb meals early in the day are going to put you out of rhythm. And you can get away with this. The leaner you are, the more you can get away with it. But, the, but it still can be negative in terms of your body's natural energy. Uh, health conditions, uh, head injuries can also can mess with it. And then like just having bad sleep hygiene. So not having a sleep schedule, not going to sleep at the same time, drinking late at night, washing screens too close to bedtime, you know, sleeping outside. I don't know, you know, always being on the run from predators, just kind of, I don't know where you live. So maybe, maybe one, maybe all those things, but that's how, those are good ways of getting out of sync with your body's natural rhythms. So rather than being like, Hey, here's, 
it's really dark in here if I turn the light off. Rather than being like, hey, here's, the, here's exactly how circadian rhythms work and during the day, but I wanted to talk through a normal day in the life of a busy entrepreneur or busy professional, someone who's doing a lot of work, is career oriented, is going and like, and has goals to hit, okay? So basically I broke up this day into four sections, four different segments, okay? And I'm gonna talk you through what those look like. And then, and then we're gonna talk about some inputs, things that can change how your energy is during those times. And then we'll talk about kind of the idea. So number one, here's like, these are the, like we'll call these the outputs, okay? This is what like you wake up and you're doing these things. These are the outputs for the day. So number one is early AM. That's your wake up, get ready for the daytime. You know, so if you're having a little bit of a workout, if you're eating breakfast, if you're meditating, journaling, you know, any sort of like morning routine that goes into that, that we'll call it prep time, okay? Early AM is your prep time. That's before you're like the bulk of the day starts. So I don't know how long that is for you. Sometimes some people have like start at that like 10 o'clock, God bless them. You know, some people start at 6 a.m. So like, I don't know where you're at. Maybe your prep time is getting up, pouring coffee blindly into a travel mug, getting in your car and driving to driving to your, your work. Maybe that's it. Maybe you get up and maybe you have a night, like a 16 part smoothie and 45 minute journaling routine. Maybe that's you, I don't know. But either way, that goes into what we call prep time, all right? Then the next one is gonna be our focus time. So that's the, a, that's the, like the AM. So, you know, after prep time, but before lunch is like focus time. That's when you we're able to really do our deep work, our best work, the best things that we can do during the day. So some of us um, might go like straight into a job where it's like, Hey, I guess I, this is not necessarily my focus time, but for the majority of us, we're going to get more high quality work done in the morning than we can really do later times of the day. Our body's more primed for it and more set up. We've woken up our best, some of our best energy, our focus, our mental acuity, our creativity, all those things are amplified in the morning, okay? And especially, especially if you train to be highly amplified in the morning. I forget who, who it was that said that some famous writer was saying that like, he said, um, like, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna totally butcher this quote, so I'm, I shouldn't even attempt it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. He said, my inspiration always strikes um, in the morning for me, He's like, and, it always strikes at 9 a.m. or something like that. Inspiration always strikes at the, at the exact same time. And his point was that um, it's not inspiration strikes, it's that he sits down with his typewriter or his, or his cup of coffee at 9 a.m. every single day. So like, like there's no writer's block for him because he's just trained his body to be ready at 9 a.m. Man, I need to look up who said that because it's gonna drive me crazy. And that was just the crummiest story I maybe ever told. In Anyways, oh, it's William Faulkner. He said, I only write when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, it strikes at nine every morning. Wow, that's why he's a writer and I'm just a guy with long hair. So he says smart things and I stumble through them and turn one sentence like succinct, just really punchy quote into four minutes of meandering and useless diatribe. So, you know, bless up. Thank you. Thanks for listening. So that's your, that's your focus time morning after your after your early morning after your prep time is focus time okay then we'll probably generally have like a midday meal maybe it's lunch maybe it's earlier maybe it's a little later doesn't matter but like basically after that we're going to move into something um that i like to call checking boxes time okay this is when we're going to be doing a lot more of like our follow-up work this is when we're hitting our to-do list doing those things that we're like oh yeah i gotta get back to so and so i gotta send this email we gotta do this sorts of things and if you're, if you're a reverse of this, if you were doing your checking boxes in the morning and then trying to do focus time in the afternoon and you have any semblance of control over your day, I would urge you to switch those things around. Put those, put those things in the, in the morning that are going to move the needle for you, for your business, for your relationships, for your career, whatever that looks like. Just try to get, the, like, you're gonna be more better in the morning. You're gonna get more done. You're gonna have more focus. So if you have the ability to do your deep work that the important the stuff, the creative stuff earlier, you're going to be much better for it, okay? So checking boxes time happens in the afternoon. That's when we're, you know, doing our to-do list, kissing babies, all the, all the things that we need to do that, that get us, like, that keep us um, on track. And I don't have it right in front of me right now, but my to-do list, it seems like it grows. Like every Monday, it just like, and I try to spend those hours in the afternoon when I'm free between coaching calls and all that stuff, checking those boxes off, just taking care of things that, that, uh, Maybe you're not necessarily moving the needle or ringing the register or doing stuff, but are still important or urgent, depending on where you're at and what you're up to. And then, then I think the, the 
next one is kind of like, it's a, like, this is kind of depends on you and your lifestyle, but like that's, we now shift out of that checking boxes time, like kind of like pre PM meal, pre dinner, it's going to be like maybe family time, maybe a little bit of low key work. Maybe it's like play time. Maybe this is your gym time. There's so there's like a kind of like that, that gray area in here where you probably still need to be a little bit, uh, have some energy. Not, you don't want to be crashed out on the couch, but you're probably not putting together like like you're not doing your the bulk of your writing or creating new things at this time okay so i'm thinking that's like between like the four o'clock and six o'clock p.m when we're just wrapping things up so like that's wrap up time i most people, some people don't have that so i just i'm kind of excluding that from from this and then the last time is like after our p.m meal after dinner that's our wind down time our rest and digest time so that's where we're going to be prepping for bed um you know getting things like get, like putting the bow on the day if you're doing any sort of um like writing down your three critical tasks for the next day, planning out your next day, um, reflecting on your, your previous day. That's what that time is for. It's rest and digest. It's wind down time. Okay. So those are our outputs. And we're going to break it. We break it up into four sections, prep time, focus time, checking boxes time, rest and digest time. Okay. So that's the four major things we're talking about. Now here are the inputs. Here are what we have available to, and then we're talking about our training nutrition tactics. Okay. And I, there's a couple things on here. There's a lot of stuff that I've left off. So like, if you're like, well, he didn't even talk about cinnamon of turmeric. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. Like that's, I don't, it didn't seem like it was that important. So like that, like there's a bunch of stuff that you could add to this list that I'm just not gonna have on it that you're probably gonna be mad about, but <clears throat> that's life, baby, that's showbiz. So number one, caffeine, nicotine, nootropics, some sort of external energy source. That's gonna increase your focus. Most of us do something like that in the morning. Um, protein, that's gonna improve satiety, give you clean energy, lo like long-time burning energy throughout the day. Fat, also gonna improve satiety. Make sure that you're not feeling hunger pangs all the time. And it's also going to trigger fat burn. Really, it can be really important to, to have that distinction there. When you're having a lot of fat, it's easier for your body to shift into a mode where you're burning stored fat. When you're having a lot of carbs, it's harder for your body to shift into that mode because you're giving it fuel. It's like plugging your phone in and expecting the battery to drain. It's not going to drain until you unplug. Okay, so you got to unplug from carbs. And then fats are a good way to shift back into and help your body learn, hey, we need to be burning more fat for fuel. By the way, fat is a great low impact fuel source. So for that focused work, that focus time, we'll get into that in a second. Carbohydrates, that's a refuel, refuel from activities, help you with strength training, improve performance, and then short bursts of energy. Okay. So if you're, if you're having like a bunch of a bowl of honey nut Cheerios in the morning, um, hopefully you're going and doing something that requires a bowl full of honey nut Cheerio energy. Um, big meals. I know this is a little bit of just like a little differentiation. Big meals are they trigger rest and digest. They shift us into a state of like of digesting, which as we've talked about a lot of times before, pulls your blood from your brain, from your extremities into your gut to digest. And if you don't, if you don't have as much blood in your brain, you're not going to be thinking as clearly, period. You're going to be more tired. They also trigger your parasympathetic nervous system. That's rest and digest mode, which can be great when used at the right time, when it matches up with our outputs. Okay. And that's going to be, that's the theme today. Everything has to match up with our outputs, okay? So uh, healthy fruits and vegetables, great way to get vitamins, minerals, increase your vitality, increase your energy, increase satiety. So um, like having, having those as a part of your day is a good way to like, if you're like, ah, man, I need a boost and you're going to have like something that's like really, really healthy, super nutrition, nutritionally dense. And I always think, I always think carrots. Carrots are one of like the, like people don't talk about them because they're not like a superfood. They're really basic. You're not going to, you're not going to find someone selling carrots and making a ton of money. Like they would with like organic llama fed wheat grass from the Yucatan peninsula or some bullshit. Um, but carrots are amazing. Carrots are the, like some of the best foods on the planet. So that's what I think of when I think of a high nutrient dense food, that's going to help you build energy. And then small, small meals are kind of the last one I talked about here. Those are, they're neutral in, in terms of energy. They don't cause sleepiness. And then if you have the right foods during those, some of the things I've talked about, proteins, fats, uh, fruits and vegetables, those are good ways of building energy. So rather than having like a big meal that's high in carbs, which can help build, like crush energy, having a small meal is high in proteins, fats, and fruits and vegetables can be a great way to uh, continue to build, build energy. Okay. So What's the problem with that most people do? And what's the solution? So the problem is that most people are either trying to do one of two things. They're trying to cut out complete, complete macronutrient groups, or they're trying to kind of go along with just like this standard American diet. You know, maybe that's, maybe you're like, oh, I'm doing calories in, I'm doing macros. I'm counting my macros. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like if it fits your macros, it's fine. 
yeah, that's fine. Every diet can help you lose weight as long as calories and proteins are accounted for. But not every diet is going to help you do it long term. And not every diet is going to help you feel amazing when you do it, period. So when I talk about these sorts of things, like don't like I'm talk, I talk a lot of shit about keto. I talk a lot of shit about uh, some of these other diets, but they're not, they're not necessarily bad. They're just not optimal for what I want. And what I want is fat loss, muscle gain, and focus, energy. Almost, almost next time. So having that, like having those things in place is gives you the tools you need to maintain long term. Because if you feel good, you are more likely to do things like go to the gym and prep your food and do all these other like other little ticky tack like ticky tack things that all lead to success, all lead to you getting that W. So the wrong thing to do is have six meals per day evenly split up between cr- proteins, carbs, and fats. Okay. Total, like it's that is an option, but in terms of going along with your body's natural outputs, that's not what we want. Because if you're having a, if you're having like even the standard American breakfast, you're having toast or a banana or oatmeal or cereal granola in the morning. You know, you know granola is like mostly healthy. And you're having those high carbohydrate meals. What you're going to be doing is you're setting yourself behind from the beginning. You're spiking your blood sugar. You're creating energy spikes throughout the day. Whereas what you need is you need this super long-term, bur- like like low-key burning energy that's just going to provide you with like the enough energy to get through the day, because when you eat less, you can get more done. So you're having these low, like smaller meals with the right nutrients in them. You're going to be going along and just boosting what your body already naturally wants to do, the natural cycle of your work and your and your energy levels. So if we can go along with that, you're going to get more done, feel better, and then be more successful long-term because you're noticing the effects that it's having on the rest of your life. So having that standard American breakfast, having high carbs in the morning, it sets you up for, it sets you up for failure often. Like, so I don't know if, if you've ever been there, but like one time I was, I was like in a place where I was like, Oh, you know, I need to wake up in the morning, but I've been getting up like at the right time. Anyways, I don't need to set my alarm. And I was, so I like, you know, you get up at like, you like check your phone, like you roll over at 4am and you check your phone and you're like, Oh, it's four. Yeah, I got three more hours of sleep. You roll over at six and it's like, oh, six o'clock, I had another hour to sleep. And you roll over at seven, 18, you're like, oh shit, gotta go. And you get up and you start and you're running and you're putting on clothes and you button your shirt wrong and you just kind of smell bad a little bit because you like had that adrenaline response and you don't have time to shower. And maybe this is just me. Maybe this is a story that you guys don't know about because you are all have good planning skills and remain on task all the time. Not this guy. So I know from experience that when days start like that, you it is very tough to catch up. You're struggling. You're running all day, and like, and by the time like two o'clock hits, you're like, "God damn, what, what happened today?" And all because you were just twenty minutes late in the morning. It's the same thing when you have the wrong breakfast, the wrong food in the morning. You can totally throw off your vibe and your rhythm for the whole rest of the day because your body's always playing catch up. And this is especially true if you have a waist height ratio of 0.46 or above. This is especially true if you have any sort of insulin resistance. So if you're super lean, you got a six pack. There's gonna be a lot less applicable and you're going to be able to get away with a lot more if you don't have that if you have love handles if you have lower abdominal fat then this is going to impact you at a higher degree so you need to be more conscientious of this because it, it's going to impact your mood your energy and just how you feel all day long as well as you know if you're looking for fat loss huge impact on fat loss okay so what we need to do instead is have that high fat high protein breakfast that's going to give us satiety going to send us on a like this nice even blood sugar rush so we're not getting this big spike and then big drop where we're now getting hungry about 1030 again. Okay. So that's the major problem that, that so many people deal with. They get that hunger pangs at 1030, which is not even like hunger pangs. Generally, you don't need any more calories. Most people in the U S don't need any more calories for like the whole, the next week. They're like, we're good. We got stored fat. We can be, we're going to be okay. But the problem is when our, bo- our body start telling our brain, Hey, like we just run a little bit low on energy right now because we had that massive energy spike with our blood sugar and insulin. And we just get dropped 10 30 2 30 we see this the most you know so that that mid-morning mid-afternoon slump is a killer and it crushes your productivity in the morning and it crushes your productivity in the afternoon so if we can even get away from that you're going to make more money you're going to feel better you're going to lose more fat you're going to be able to hit the gym be more consistent and by the way your family's going to be like wow you look you look good and you are fun to be around which i like being around people who are fun to be around i really don't like being around people who are dickheads that's a personal thing i don't know if you're that same way but Hopefully, you know, we're on the same page here. So that's what we're doing first thing in the morning is we're going to amplify our energy, proteins and fats. Then 
what we're going to do in the afternoon is we're going to have a low, like a much smaller meal than, than most people. So like we're not having that champagne martini, three martini lunch with burgers and fries. That is the soul crushing destroyer of afternoon productivity. If you can get away from that, like you're just going to be doing so much better. So we want to have a smaller meal that's going to give us the energy we need to get through that checking the boxes time. Okay. This is a time when it's easy for our attention to wander, to kind of fall off track, to get distracted by Facebook and Oh, squirrel. Um, so it's important to prioritize the nutrition or the training or something around that time in order to be able to get the most out of it. You know, if you work at a place where you're like, I don't give a shit what happens at, at three o'clock then by all means have the burger and fries, kick back in your chair. If no one cares if you're sleeping or not, listen, it's probably not a big deal for you. But if you're someone who needs to get stuff done, if you've got quotas to hit, if you're, if you're, if you, if you get to eat what you kill, you're in sales, you're commission-based, this is important. This is really, really important. And then the follow-up to this is that, yeah, you need that. You need the right food, really light meals, high, high in vegetables. But there's another thing like this. And this is what we got. We were talking about at the beginning when I was doing a little head banging for you is movement. Movement in the middle of the day is clutch to get you back up. Cause a lot of times you just like fall off. You just, you know, my time right now, three o'clock and about two o'clock today, I was like, I could really go for a nice book and um, a little tea and just kick back. But we got a podcast to do. So we're not going to show up to the podcast lackluster with no energy. So we put on some music. I, I, I was listening to hip hop, obviously. And then we just move around a little bit. I like to get in the zone there. Like that's fun for me. That's a one way to do it. The other really easy way, if you're like, that's stupid. I don't like to dance. Okay, fine. You don't have to. But one of the easiest ways to do it is just toe pops, just jumping up on down your toes. You can do a jump rope. You can do like a rebounder, a little trampoline. My three-year-old has a trampoline. So I'm always getting on that thing. Boom. Yeah. I mean, the light's going off in here. It's kind of like a rave. <laughs> and then just, just having the, like just a little bit of movement in your life is just going to get you going. What's nice about like bouncing kind of like that up and down motion is it actually creates lymphatic drainage. Like you get rid of something like that the stuff that your body pulls into your lymph nodes, like the like toxins and different things like that. It's trying to purify out of your body. It can flush that stuff out. So pee it out. So you get a, you get a like kind of a cleanse, a little cleanse. You get a boost to your energy and you get a little bit of movement. Like it's a huge win-win. So you either, whether you, whether you want to throw on some yellow wolf and get weird with it, whether you just want to like pop up and down your toes with a scowl on your face, either way is totally fine. But that movement in the middle of the day, clutch. Okay. And then the last thing we talked about, prep time and focus time and checking. And then now we're checking box time. We didn't really get into the focus time, but focus time is a good time. That's when we start having it like that. The nootropics, the caffeine. So not having it right off the bat for our prep time, but we're having it you know, either post, like post our, our first meal or just doing something that's gonna get our energy up to really stay, get honed in and focused. So for some people that can be meditation, for some people that can be a, having a caffeinated beverage, for some people that can be hitting their hitting a quick workout. Some people that's like they're hitting their full workout, but anything like that's going to help put you in the zone and be really, really focused and, and in, um, intentional about that work. Okay. And then uh, if, and if we did the right thing at a, for our PM, for our lunch meal or midday meal, then our, then our checking boxes time is going to go seamlessly. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is rest and digest time. That PM meal, like after, after dinner, how do you wind down appropriately? Well, at this point, since we've been eating a little bit lighter all day to in order to accommodate our energy, now's a great time to have a bigger meal, okay? And bigger meal, what I generally mean here is having a higher carb concentrate in your meals. And the reason for that is simple. Higher carbs mean that your body's gonna shift more into that rest and digest state, that parasympathetic nervous system dominance. That's where we start like winding down, you know, you and Grog, you kicking it around the fire, you're just eating a little roasted saber tooth tiger, everyone's telling war stories. Like it's, we're chilling out, we're breaking bread, we're enjoying ourselves. This is not a time where people are going to be like, yo, you guys want to pick up, do a little pickup, six on six basketball? Like, no, no, miss me with that shit. We are instead going to just be relaxing and getting ready to shift into a really deep sleep, okay? Because sleep is, is super important. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're not going to be able to wake up and have that great, that great uh, prep time, great focus time. And so it's all a cycle, right? So you can either go a vicious cycle downwards or you can go a positive cycle upwards. I don't know what that's called, but if you do, please email me. So for this, having that, having that right kind of inputs, which is going to be our high carbohydrate, bigger meal is a great option. And then what I would love this, I love in like in an ideal world is, is right after that meal, going for a, 
just a, a, a walk, you know, whether walk with the family, walk by yourself, listen to a podcast, listen to some calmer music. That's going to help you digest the food. It's going to help you burn a few calories. You're going to feel a lot better. Walking is, a, uh, is an amazing way to just get some exercise in without ramping yourself up or beating yourself down. Walking is a positive, it's a recovery tool, not like cardio or weight training, which can be a stressor. Okay. So um, both good things, but just, we want to make sure that we're balancing that. Okay. So if the best, in the best case scenario, going with your body's natural rhythms, it's going to be have a high carb dinner with protein as well. Of course, obviously it's always protein and have a walk right afterwards. Okay. So here's an ideal world is wake up, get ready for the day, a little uh, prep time. So you're going to have some water. You're going to have a little bit of movement, um, get whatever you need to get focused. Then for our focus time, we're going to have, we're going to have some sort of caffeinated beverage, probably. Maybe you're doing a little bit of uh, just a quick five minute workout, get on a spin bike, get on a jump rope, do some, a little bit of movement there. Then uh, midday meal, we're gonna have really pretty light, focused heavily on vegetables, plant-based. Some protein in there is always a good option as well. And then, and so that way you're checking boxes time is fulfilling fast and you get a lot done without being getting lethargic or tired. And then for our rest and digest time, we're gonna have a higher carb, higher protein meal for dinner. And we're gonna go on a walk afterwards, okay? So this is how you use your body's natural rhythms, not only hormonally, but also with the natural rhythms that you've created in your lifestyle. And I'm not talking to people who are, you know, honestly, like this is not really like a good, a good option for people who are like doing third shift or people who, you know, have like, you know, really crazy jobs that are outside the normal, the normal spectrum. I don't even know if this is like great for like full-time, full-time stay-at-home moms because they just like have different, like a little bit of different needs. So in, in a case like this, we're talking to people who are career driven, who are owning businesses, who are, who are doing commission-based sales, who are in their, in their stuff, having to be cr like think critically and deliver products. And this is the ideal, the number one solution, which is why I put on the book, oops, the entrepreneur's diet for superhuman focus and rapid fat loss, because if anyone needs superhuman focus, it's entrepreneurs. Okay. And that's why this, I'm so convinced that this strategy is, is ideal for getting the fat loss results you want, not just today, not just tomorrow, but long-term. And so if you're interested in dropping 30 pounds in the next four months or so, just hit me up with, say, hit me with a, I'm in, just drop me a DM, say, I'm in, shoot me an email, Nate at NA training systems is saying, I'm in. And we can rock and roll from there. I would love to share with you exactly those next steps to get that done. And if you're like, hey, listen, I don't want to have to create this on my own. I just want someone to just give me what I need. Got you, fam. Let's go. But I, it's already done for you. It's already written up. It's already ready to roll. You just need to start, like, we just need to start applying it right now. And what I've done is created in a way that it makes it so, so easy. You got shopping lists. You got guides. You got supplement guides. You got, you got your meal plans. Everything is ready to go to get you those amazing results to kick, off, kick it off. And then we'll pull the training wheels away, teach you the framework, get you those results so you can keep them long-term. And oh yeah, by the way, your energy is going to be up. You're going to be feeling better than ever. So most people like the, the number one thing that I hear about people when they say this, like that they read this book, they go, oh yeah, like I don't even think of it as a diet anymore. It's just how I eat. And the amount of people with six packs who have said that to me, like blows my mind. So if that's you, if you want any help, just hit me up in the DM, say I'm in, shoot me an email, Nate at NA Training Systems saying I'm in. Other than that, I hope you guys have had an amazing day, enjoyed this episode and got something really powerful out of it. Make sure to like, subscribe, do some other stuff, review, leave us a review. You know, I always appreciate that. It allows me to, it just allows me to be more present and just give you more smooches. All right. See you later. Bye.